spontaneous emission is the process by which a quantum system such as an atom, molecule, nanocrystal or nucleus in an excited state undergoes a transition to a state with a lower energy and emits quanta of energy. Light or luminescence from an atom is a fundamental process that plays an essential role in many phenomena in nature and forms the basis of many applications such as fluorescent tubes, older television screens, plasma display panels, lasers, and light-emitting diodes. Lasers start by spontaneous emission, and then normal continuous operation works by stimulated emission. Introduction If a light source is in the excited state with energy, it may spontaneously decay to a lower lying level with energy, releasing the difference in energy between the two states as a photon. The photon will have angular frequency and energy, whereas the reduced Planck constant, the phase of the photon in spontaneous emission is random as is the direction in which the photon propagates. This is not true for stimulated emission. An energy level diagram illustrating the process of spontaneous emission is shown below. If the number of light sources in the excited state at time is given by the rate at which decays is whereas the rate of spontaneous emission in the rate equation is a proportionality constant for this particular transition in this particular light source. The constant is referred to as the Einstein A coefficient, and has units. The above equation can be solved to give, whereas the initial number of light sources in the excited state is the time and is the radiative decay rate of the transition. The number of excited states thus decays exponentially with time, similar to radioactive decay. After one lifetime, the number of excited states decays to 36.8% of its original value. The radiative decay rate is inversely proportional to the lifetime. Theory Spontaneous transitions were not explainable within the framework of the Schrödinger equation, in which the electronic energy levels were quantized, but the electromagnetic field was not. Given that the eigenstates of an atom are properly diagonalized, the overlap of the wave functions between the excited state and the ground state of the atom is zero. Thus, in the absence of a quantized electromagnetic field, the excited state atom cannot decay to the ground state. In order to explain spontaneous transitions, quantum mechanics must be extended to a quantum field theory, wherein the electromagnetic field is quantized at every point in space. The quantum field theory of electrons and electromagnetic fields is known as quantum electrodynamics. In quantum electrodynamics, the electromagnetic field has a ground state, the QED vacuum, which can mix with the excited stationary states of the atom. As a result of this interaction, the stationary state of the atom is no longer a true eigenstate of the combined system of the atom plus electromagnetic field. In particular, the electron transition from the excited state to the electronic ground state mixes with the transition of the electromagnetic field from the ground state to an excited state, a field state with one photon in it. Spontaneous emission in free space depends upon vacuum fluctuations to get started. Although there is only one electronic transition from the excited state to ground state, there are many ways in which the electromagnetic field may go from the ground state to a one photon state. That is, the electromagnetic field has infinitely more degrees of freedom, corresponding to the different directions in which the photon can be emitted. Equivalently, one might say that the phase space offered by the electromagnetic field is infinitely larger than that offered by the atom. This infinite degrees of freedom for the emission of the photon results in the apparent irreversible decay, i.e., spontaneous emission, in presence of the electromagnetic vacuum modes. The combined atom vacuum system is explained by the superposition of the wave functions of the excited state atom with no photon and the ground state atom with a single emitted photon, wherein are the atomic excited state electromagnetic vacuum wave function and its probability amplitude. 
and of a ground state atom with a single photon wave function and its probability amplitude is the atomic transition frequency, and is the frequency of the photon. The sum is over and which are the wave number and polarization of the emitted photon, respectively. As mentioned above, the emitted photon has a chance to be emitted with different wave numbers and polarizations, and the resulting wave function is a superposition of these possibilities. To calculate the probability of the atom at the ground state, to solve for the transition amplitude, one needs to average over all the vacuum modes. Since one must consider the probabilities that the emitted photon occupies various parts of phase space equally, the spontaneously emitted photon has infinite different modes to propagate into. Thus the probability of the atom reabsorbing the photon and returning to the original state is negligible, making the atomic decay practically irreversible. Such irreversible time evolution of the atom vacuum system is responsible for the apparent spontaneous decay of an excited atom. If one were to keep track of all the vacuum modes, the combined atom vacuum system would undergo unitary time evolution, making the decay process reversible. Cavity quantum electrodynamics is one such system where the vacuum modes are modified resulting in the reversible decay process. See also quantum revival. The theory of the spontaneous emission under the QED framework was first calculated by Weisskopf and Weiner. In spectroscopy one can frequently find that atoms or molecules in the excited states dissipate their energy in the absence of any external source of photons. This is not spontaneous emission, but is actually non-radiative relaxation of the atoms or molecules caused by the fluctuation of the surrounding molecules present inside the bulk. Rate of spontaneous emission The rate of spontaneous emission can be described by Fermi's golden rule. The rate of emission depends on two factors an atomic part, which describes the internal structure of the light source and a field part, which describes the density of electromagnetic modes of the environment. The atomic part describes the strength of a transition between two states in terms of transition moments. In a homogeneous medium, such as free space, the rate of spontaneous emission in the dipole approximation is given by, whereas the emission frequency is the index of refraction, is the transmission dipole moment, is the vacuum permittivity, is the reduced Planck constant, is the vacuum speed of light, and is the fine structure constant. The above equation clearly shows that the rate of spontaneous emission in free space increases proportionally to, in contrast with atoms, which have a discrete emission spectrum, quantum dots can be tuned continuously by changing their size. This property has been used to check the frequency dependence of the spontaneous emission rate as described by Fermi's golden rule, radiative and non-radiative decay, the quantum efficiency. In the rate equation above, it is assumed that decay of the number of excited states only occurs under emission of light. In this case one speaks of full radiative decay and this means that the quantum efficiency is 100%. Besides radiative decay, which occurs under the emission of light, there is a second decay mechanism, non-radiative decay. To determine the total decay rate, radiative and non-radiative rates should be summed, whereas the total decay rate is the radiative decay rate and the non-radiative decay rate. The quantum efficiency is defined as the fraction of emission processes in which emission of light is involved. In non-radiative relaxation, the energy is released as phonons, more commonly known as heat. Non-radiative relaxation occurs when the energy difference between the levels is very small, and these typically occur on a much faster time scale than radiative transitions. For many materials, Electrons move quickly from a high energy level to a metastable level via small non-radiative transitions and then make the final move down to the bottom level via an optical or radiative transition. This final transition is the transition over the band gap in semiconductors. 
Large non-radiative transitions do not occur frequently because the crystal structure generally cannot support large vibrations without destroying bonds. Meta-stable states form a very important feature that is exploited in the construction of lasers. Specifically, since electrons decay slowly from them, they can be deliberately piled up in this state without too much loss and then stimulated emission can be used to boost an optical signal.